so we're going to go ahead and start with alliance, races, and uh, racials, and then we'll get into horde, uh, race and racials, and then we will go over spec. So with the hitbox jump box for the alliance characters, um, I still, I, I, you know, I've been caught up doing AV ranking, so I haven't been able to spend too much time in Warsong Gulch. Um, so I, it's still um, kind of preliminary assessment. I've, I've definitely played, um, given it, you know, quite a number of hours, probably 30 to 40 hours in Warsong so far. And um, well, so this is going to kind of define what I've seen. I'm going to do a video after pretty much after I finish ranking where I can play 19s uh, full time and and do a lot more of the testing on hitbox and jump boxes but some of the things have stayed the same since private servers such as female humans and female gnomes being able to easily walk um, south to north through the alliance fence and thing is a lot of the jump boxes have changed well i wouldn't say the the box itself has changed but the mechanics in which it interacts with the terrain is definitely changed it's become a lot stickier so and with that it has allowed a lot of new jumps to be in play um, and it's taken some of them and changed them. The most notable of the changes is the Alliance Tot Jump, the East Tot Jump. And when I say Tot, this uh, refers to TOT, which is an acronym for Top of Tunnel. And um, it used to be the go-to jump on Alliance side anytime anyone was playing around between bottom tunnel to top tunnel or around the fence um, but that jump has been made extremely difficult so difficult that I've now completely written it off as like a pop because it's just not consistent enough to make so like the 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 amount of 19s I played I've played enough to realize this isn't consistent and if it's not consistent I'm not gonna play it because you know if I can't count on making it first try every time then I just have to figure out another way so I think eventually after I finish ranking and I do um, I'm gonna figure that jump out um, to where I land it every single time but it is is probably the most difficult jump at least for certain hip certain jump boxes and and basically what I'm getting at is that larger hit boxes such as like dwarf male or larger jump boxes such as dwarf male are are getting an advantage because of this because smaller ones like the undead female model that I play it's it is so narrow that it's just it's not consistent enough to play but something like the dwarf male is so fat that it actually makes it significantly easier to land that jump. Now, the first time I got into a war song on these new servers on my 19, I went and I did that jump first try, no problem, on my female undead model. Um, but it wasn't until I get into comms with people and they're like, oh, yeah, the east side tot, you know, alliance tot jump is like super difficult. And I go, what? No, I just landed it. And I go over there. And like 50 times I can't land it again so it is um, it is definitely a new development that makes me makes me consider that the that the fatter models are going to have a, an advantage especially with that East Alliance tot jump um, but they still are disadvantaged when it comes to Alliance fence um, but there is there, because of like the new mechanics of how jump boxes are interacting with terrain, there are new alliance fence jumps, which allow fat models to go over. Um, and 
one of the things I'm curious to see is whether and how easily the fat models are able to go south to north because I've seen they're able to go north to south with ease um, in like in a three series jump with ease but I haven't seen the fatter models do south to north with ease and that could be just because of the people um, it could be if you get like a, a very talented player uh, who's playing a fat model they might be able to do south to north with ease and if that's the case then fat models might actually be um, more advantageous than the skinnier models so I'm gonna do a video after I finish ranking where I'm gonna do like a deep dive into every single race model um, and see how how does it compare with each jump so but basically the same still applies like the female human and the female gnome are both able to easily pass through the alliance fence um, and they still have that advantage and the small models are now disadvantaged with East Alliance taught and because of that disadvantage it might end up being played out a lot more so I just wanted to kind of go over that quickly um, even if it wasn't so quick <laughs> but let's take a look at base stats now for warrior so with warrior you're using basically every stat except for intellect if you watched the full length video on itemization you recall that I said that spirit is actually um, a decent consideration for warrior because warrior have the best scaling with spirit um, it goes warrior rogue and then I believe it's hunter third and then after that it's so like the scaling is so minimal that it's really hardly worth noting um, but obviously our main stat as a warrior is going to be stam and then a lot of people will say strength second um, but I'm not entirely convinced of that I think strength and agility are more or less equal if agility in fact doesn't have a higher value than strength at 19 but that is just my opinion um, obviously for DPS purposes strength is going to be technically better but for PvP um, I'm of the opinion that agility is better for warrior at 19 so mainly because of the dodge the armor and the ability to crit and the scaling at 19 with agility is very good um, so it's not the the 21 agility like it is at 60 for a crit it's it's much less than that it's um, <clears throat> I believe it's something like 12 I don't know don't quote me on that but let's take a look at these stats we'll start off with stamina 22 for human, 23 for dwarf, 21 for night elf, and 21 for gnome. Uh, so right off the bat we can see night elf and gnome are the lowest human being in the middle and dwarf having the most, the spread of two. So the spread is actually quite low so I wouldn't say that this is necessarily all that big of a difference um, between the two. But Dwarf is going to have the most. Human's going to be in the middle. And Night Elf and Gnome are going to be the lowest. Uh, but the spread is very low on that. Next we'll take a look at Agility. Human with 20. Dwarf with 16. Night Elf with 25. And Gnome with 23. So quite a spread here. Between Dwarf and Night Elf. That is a spread of 9. That is very significant. With... Um, with I guess we'll go from lowest to highest dwarf human gnome night elf um, <clears throat> and like I said I think agility is extremely important for a 19 warrior um, so so far I think that gnome has the best combination uh, with the 2123 if we're just looking at stam and well, I guess Night Elf would 
would technically have the best there uh, combination. Um, I think I was letting the the racials influence that whenever I said that, but um, yeah, Night Elf so far has the best Stam Agi combination. Now, if we factor in strength, human twenty three, dwarf twenty two. Night Elf 20 and Gnome 18. Um, a, a, f a decent spread of 5, although not nearly as much as the agility spread. But uh, we, it goes it goes right in order here with um, Gnome having the least at 18, Night Elf second least at 20, Dwarf 22, and Human at 23. So. Again, I think that uh, we're seeing a good spread there with Night Elf. Um, and then I, I really did the really so far with between Stam, Agi, and Strength, it looks to be the worst combination of these is Dwarf, unless you value Stamina um, above all else. But. Between these three sets, Stam has the least amount of spread, only going from 21, or yeah, from 21 to 23, a spread of two. Agility having a spread of nine, and strength having a spread of five. So, so far, I mean, I think I think Human Night Elf and Gnome are are about equivalent. Um, I think Night Elf is, has the best spread. Of, of or has the best combination of, of these three stats um, now let's take a look at spirit um, I believe this should say 23 um, but that's because of the the added the added human racial I believe that should be at 23 22 spirit 20 and 20 a spread of two not much um, so with with the spread that small of two and and spirit being I think the least important of these four stats that um, that it's it's almost about the same of course human is going to have the uh, the better the better scaling with spirit due to their racial so that is worth noting that that human has the the best spirit there uh, so overall, between these, um, it looks to be Dwarf has the worst setup in terms of base stats, uh, mainly because of that huge hit they take in agility. Um, just overall, uh, a low, a low aggregate number of stats. Um, Gnome is is looks good although it's low in strength uh, which is not exciting and it's low in stamina which is not exciting and it's high in agility um, which is nice uh, night elf you know not that great strength um, amazing agility uh, it's low on stamina dwarf middle of the road strength abysmal agility the best stam but remember the spread is only two so it's not that significant and um, decent spirit whereas human 23 strength the most strength a healthy amount of agility um, and second highest stam with the highest amount of spirit so right now I think the human base stats are looking like the most advantageous for warrior um, with night elf taking a second place there and then gnome and dwarf so to rank these on base stats I would say human base stats number one actually let me just put a little actually I'm not gonna do that but yeah human one number one or human base stats number one gnome number two Night Elf 3, sorry, that should be Night Elf 2, shouldn't it? Yeah. Night Elf 2nd, so Human, Night Elf, Gnome, Dwarf. 
<clears throat> but those are just the base stats. Let's get into their racials. Human racial uh, perception dramatically increased stealth detection by 20 seconds. This is kind of big because as a warrior, you are doing a lot of rogue, um, you know, uh, fielding rogues, managing enemy rogues, making sure to minimize their impact on your team. So perception is actually kind of big here for warrior just because they're responsible for, um, you know, cattling the, the enemy rogues. Sword specialization, that's great for, you know, because you're going to be using a lot of Shadow Fang for your one-hander. Um, mace specialization, beautiful for for the two, for the best two-hander on Alliance. So those two weapon specializations are just perfect. Like, the, it couldn't be situated more perfectly for a 19 warrior. The human spirit, again... A great rate a great passive for uh, warriors since they have the highest scaling with spirit and diplomacy extra 10 rep gain why not um, although this isn't gonna help you in like a game at all ever it's just it's just a nice little bonus for the dwarf racial stone form I hear a lot of people talk about stone form uh, immunity, well, it removes and gives you immunity to bleed, poison, disease effects, and gives you an additional armor by 10% lasting 8 seconds. So, this is huge in basically all PvP past 19. It's not really that big of a deal at 19 because you don't have rogue poisons to worry about. Um, really, all stone form does for you at 19 is if you have a bleed or a poison on you like a venom strike or a rend or something like that and you need to be able to turn a corner and quickly bandage stone form gives you that ability to just remove those things and get a quick bandage on you on yourself of course this isn't going to help you if you have something like like a corruption or a moon fire on you like those are still gonna tick so it doesn't completely allow you to just drop everything in bandage it's only for bleed and poisons there aren't any diseases at 19 so and it also gives you the additional 10 percent armor for eight seconds that's really it's not that big but it is helpful especially if you're coming under fire um, from a rogue or something it will reduce the total damage taken by, I mean, I would have to see the amount, the total amount of armor that a warrior will be wearing, but I would imagine it would be something like reduces over the course of like, uh, for eight seconds, man. It depends how much damage you take. It's kind of hard to really put a number on that uh, because it depends on how much burst you're taking, and how much armor you already have, um, and what percent of that is actual physical damage taken. So, you know, it, it is nice. So, find treasure, not going to help. Gun specialization, not really going to help. Like, you could be using a little Timmy's, but you shouldn't really be using a gun or a bow. You should be using a, um, a throwing weapon for when your charge is on cooldown and you're out of combat. Um, and then Frost Resistance is nice. Um, it's going to stack really nicely with the Arctic Buckler. Um, especially if you have that enchanted with Frost Resistance, you'll be at something like 30 Frost Resist uh, with that, which is kind of crazy. It'd be really good against uh, mages. Um, but overall, the, these racials just, I, they're just not going to compare to... Um, to the human racials in my opinion for the night elf races racials you have the shadow meld which active when you activate allows you to slip into the shadows uh, reducing the chance that enemies can detect you this is nice um, in order to surprise people so you could be like out in mid stealth and like somebody's trying like a rogue is trying to cross and they don't know that you're there and they're not stealth yet because they don't see anyone around 
you can get that instant charge out of Shadow Meld um, and catch them out of stealth. It's also good, basically just catching people off guard. It's, it's good. 1% uh, dodge is nice. Um, but really, I mean, it's nice. And you're already going to have a lot of dodge with the amount of just base agility you get on a Night Elf. Excuse me. Wisp Spirit, transform into a Wisp upon death, increasing speed by 50%. So I've said it before in other um, race and spec videos, this only has one particular play in Warsong, which is you're trying to get into enemy base and it's difficult to get into enemy base. And it's really, this is just like a Night Elf thing where you can die, you know, in the enemy base and then you don't accept the res after you release and it allows you to run back into base much more quickly than you would have been able to run into their base um, because of this increased speed and because you don't have to deal with mid and you don't have to deal with sneaking in like you can get in there without anyone ever seeing you and then you can res eat and shadow melt and is very stealthy way of getting to places without anyone knowing that you're there and then you also get a 10 nature resistance which is nice against like a druid and um and just like hunter poison um but not not all that big uh, the gnome racial escape artist so this is why a lot of people go gnome it's a one minute cooldown which is absurd a half second cast to um, remove immobilization or speed reduction effects so this is big 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 especially for a warrior who needs to have that freedom to get out there and hamstring people disarm people to get on top of someone uh, this escape artist is very big for that it's one of the best PvP racials in the game hands down um, and this is really nice for when you don't have a blessing of freedom or the blessing of freedom like gets put on the rogue and not you um, really good for that intelligence by 5% not applicable engineering skills by 15 I've gone over this a little bit it's allows you to go from 150 to 165 engineering which allows you to have the uh, goblin um, it's not called the goblin mortar I forget exactly what it's called um, but it does allow you like a this uh, and I'm, I don't main alliance so I'm not entirely familiar but it allows you to have and this is what I believe it to be I'm not I'm not 100% on this but I believe it's a bomb that you can throw while moving I believe that's what the that extra 15 skill will get you um, is an engineering item which you can throw and it stuns like a bomb but you can throw it while moving um, not 100% on that but I believe that's what it gets you uh, which is nice and then 10 to arcane resistance which is decent against like polymorphs um, and conch shots so it's nice but uh, I would definitely say this arcane resistance is going to be bigger than nature and, and frost for sure. <clears throat> um, so yeah, in terms of these racials, I mean, escape artist is by far the biggest out of any of these. Um, the night elf is nice for being able to sneak in, um, you know. Uh, the stone form is nice for the ability to drop bleeds and poisons, although it's not really that big of a deal at 19 um, because you don't have rogue poisons. Um, perception is great for, for humans, especially since warriors are kind of in charge of, you know, um, cattling um, enemy rogues. Uh, and then like the space or the the sword and mace specialization is just perfect for 19 warrior and the spirit is really good um, 
for warriors since they have the highest scaling. So in terms of racials, I think I would put the gnome racials in number one category, uh, just because escape artist is just is just so profound. And then the engineering skill is great, and the that additional resistance to polys and conks is also really good. And then I would say humans would be sort of in second place there with their perception, sword, and spirit, sword, mace, and spirit. And then I'd put, I'd put night elf and, and dwarf, um, I don't know, these kind of, these kind of tie. I think, I think dwarf might be slightly better because this whole thing of, of like running into enemy base in with spirit and then shadow melding isn't going to be applicable when you play against people who know what they're doing. Like, if I'm playing against a guy and it's a night elf and I know this dude, like this guy knows what he's doing, I always take his insignia so that he can't get into base. Or that he can't like sneak around and with spirit. So, if you're playing against people who know what they're doing, that's not even a play. And... Because of that, I'm gonna put I, I'm gonna put dwarf in third place and night elf racials in last place. So in terms of racials, I'll rank them gnome, human, dwarf, night elf. And if we remember our base stats, we said human, night elf, gnome, dwarf. Um, so. I mean, I, I don't. It's really up to you, like what you want to go. I think, um, you know, it's kind of a toss-up. I think Dwarf sort of takes last place, though, being third in racials and last in base stats. I think that's going to earn them last place. I think um, Gnome and Human are basically going to tie for second. Mainly because of Escape Artist is so big. Even though it's third in stats, Escape Artist is just so much bigger than all the others. Um, human having the best base stats and just really well suited racials. Um, yeah, I would probably I'd probably say overall I would put Gnome number one. Even though they're third in base stats, that Escape Artist is just too good. I would put Human. Number two is like just overall good, having the best base stats and having really, um, really on point racial abilities. And then I would put Night Elf third place for having second in base stats and having, um, you know, kind of decent ish racials. And then I would put Dwarf in last, having the, uh, the, the worst base stats and having racials that really don't do much for you but of course it's not that big of a deal you can play any one of these combinations you, i mean you can play any one of these racials and still dominate the field like these aren't going to determine if you're going to be really good or really bad uh, you as a player determines that regardless of if you consider your character to be handicapped or if you consider your character to be the best it uh, it comes down a lot more to you and your ability than it does any any of this stuff um, so, so so let's move on to horde and so <coughs> orc undead tarn and troll um, and this is going to be different from 60 because like automatically whenever I look at this and I think warrior on horde mainly because I've mained horde so much like I just automatically go orc you know orc and then I would say like oh troll and then tarn and then undead but things are really different at 19 because there's no pve and then there's also no um well, just the the spread of abilities is, is different. So, I guess we can talk about the hit and jump boxes. Um, B 
female undead and female orc, like female human and female gnome, are the only two on Horde who are able to go through Alliance Fence with ease. Um, again, like with Alliance, I'm going to have to wait until after I'm done ranking to go through and do a deep dive into every single jump and hitbox and see how it how it plays with every single jump and um, that's going to be quite a difficult thing to do because I've got to find someone who's very who's a competent jumper of each race and sex um, <laughs> which is going to be difficult because usually like the best players only play like a particular set they don't really play things like male taran you know or male troll like it's just not something that you know the best players play so it's kind of hard it's going to be kind of hard to see how it, whether or not those are going to be beneficial but anyway i will i will do that later um but like i said the fatter hitboxes seem to have um but th I'm talking like the really fat ones, like male dwarf, male tarn, and male troll, all seem to have a, l a slight advantage with Alliance East taught. Um, I don't know. Again, I'm going to have to test them. But like before, orc female and undead female both can move uh, through the Alliance fence with ease. Whereas all the others uh, still cannot, although I believe that there is a um, a way to jump south to north alliance fence that the larger hitbox or jump boxes are able to do. Um, but again, we'll be doing a video on that. Let's go over the base stats for warrior. We'll start with stamina, then we'll go over agility, strength, and then spirit. So for stamina, orc with 24. Undead with 23, Tauren with 24, and Troll with 22. So, just like on Alliance, uh, spread of 2. And really, I mean, it's not... Th these are all high values uh, compared to Alliance. But, obviously, Tauren and Orc with 24. Troll with the, few, with the least amount of Stam, 22. And Undead there in the middle with 23. We take a look at agility, all kind of low agility compared to Alliance. Agility, Orc 17, Undead 18, Tauren 15, and Troll 25. Wow, that's a spread of 10, um, which is quite significant. Um, all kind of low values, and Tauren abysmally low. So, really don't like looking at that 15 on Tauren. That is just abysmal. And Troll with, with a heaping 25 is very nice. Um, I think between these two stats, that puts Tarn in, in solidly in last place. Um, it easily puts Troll number one between these two stats. And then Undead and Orc are sort of tied there. Uh, with or trading one stat for the other between Agility and Stam. But true, but Tarn takes an easy last place. Troll takes an easy first place with an Orc and Undead being tied between Stam and Agility. And if we look at take a look at Strength, Orc with 26, Undead with 22, Torn with 28, and Troll with 22. So that's a spread of six. Um, well, it looks like Troll and Undead are kind of fallen by the wayside with with orc with 26 and tarn with 28 that's quite a bit of strength which is nice um, I don't know it's kind of hard to compare it looks to it looks like troll is still gonna take I don't know it depends on on how much you value strength on on a warrior in my opinion like I said before I don't think strength is really all that important for a warrior at 19, like it is at 60. Um, I think agility is a lot more important for a warrior at 19 than strength, um, but that's just my opinion, and I've only played 19 warrior twice, uh, not like two games, but like, you know, at least two revered. Um, 
and I found just being having the ability to crit and to get that much like rage off the crit and having um, you know have it main, mainly because of the crit because that extra that marginal strength isn't going to get get you really much rage at all whereas you crit and attack you're doing burst damage and you're getting that extra rage so really these are just like a kind of like a weird mashup of, of base stats um, I'm trying to put like a rank here I, I really don't like that that spread between agility and strength on on Torin. Um, that that agility is just so bad you really need to be critting um, and like this yeah and then orc like I like Orc better because, I mean, they've got the same totals here between Torn and Orc. You're taking the 28, uh, and you're kind of moving to strength and moving it into agility there, um, which is better. Uh, for Undead, Undead looks to have, looks to be in last place here. Between these three stats, looks to be in a solid last, uh, just like at least in totals. Um, yeah, so I would put Troll number one in, in terms of these three primary base stats. I would put Troll number one in base stats. Orc uh, number two. Tauren number three. And Undead number four in terms of base stats. But base stats aren't everything. Let's take a look at their racials. Orcs, Blood Fury, increased base melee attack power by 25% for 15 seconds. And reduces healing on you by 50%. So this is applying a mortal strike on you. This is, I love this ability in PVE. Um, works really good, especially if you are a fury spec with bloodthirst. Great for that. Not very good for PvP. Um, well, it can be good if you don't have a healer with you. Um, but whenever you use this, healers, especially in PvP will take personal offense to you using this ability because you're basically saying you know uh we'll forget you like just heal through it and um healers take that personally and so if like i remember sometimes when i would play as like a healer and a warrior would pop this up say what are you doing dude like you you've literally just mortal striked yourself don't do that don't you get like that little bit of attack power, especially at 19, is never going to be worth reducing the healing effects by 50% unless you're alone. If you're alone in like a 1v1, totally, totally do it. Um, if you have like, ban if you've already gone through your bandage cooldown, pretty much. Uh, but like, I've been in situations on my main where I use it and then like I've got it's like I gotta get away I got a bandage here if I want to win this and I'm like ah, I still have the orc racial on me and it kind of messes things up so really not a big fan of blood fury uh, hardiness 25% chance to resist stun effects big 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 uh, love that that's one of the main reasons people go orc for PvP is 25 the ridiculous amount of stun resist and on top of it you can also spec into additional stun resist and we'll get that we'll get to that as soon as uh, we finish with these racials command damage dealt by hunter pets and warlocks or in warlock pets by five percent not that big because as a warrior you're not really concerned like that's a rogue's job to handle uh to handle hunter pets not really a warrior's job to be handling those so not that big of a deal act specialization um, kind of nice on horde if you're gonna go with the night reaver but um, that's really it so kind of nice um, undead racial the biggest the biggest racial by far will of the forsaken provides immunity to uh, charm fear and sleep while active and it lasts for five seconds really big uh, regardless of what class you are will the forsaken is by far the best racial 
for Horde. Um, and, and it's really big for melee as well. Um, cannibalism, or cannibalize, you generate 7% of total health every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. Nice, um, but you can always just eat food. So, eh, nice for the RP purposes. Shadow resistance by 10. This is actually really nice because... Uh, again, against like Warlocks, against Priests, doing Shadow Damage, um, great against those types of fears. Uh, and then you have un Underwater Breathing, not applicable. Torrent, oh, I'm sorry, we never went over Spirit, did we? A little premature there. Um, shoot, now I've forgotten where we were. Let, let's just finish up with these racials and then and then we'll talk about well you know we'll give them just general ranking. Uh, Torn War Stomp really big especially for Warrior. This is something great and on most classes War Stomp's not all that good, but when you're on a Warrior War Stomp is very nice with that AOE stun, uh, especially because you can chain a War Stomp into a bomb or a bomb into a war stomp it's just really good um, especially for warrior you able to throw a war stomp out boom 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 get out like three hamstrings before they even get out of there well not three but you know you'd be able to get like at least two um, war stomp is a very beautiful racial ability for for warrior endurance uh, total base health not total health um, by five percent Nice, great for PvP, um, great for the the amount of stam you, you're already packing. Um, really good if you want to play like a flag carrying warrior. Uh, nature resistance by 10, same thing with 9 elf, like kind of nice against a druid root, which you will be coming across a lot more uh, on horde than you would on alliance because alliance druids play more of an assist role than they do a flag carry role their paladins are better flag carriers um, but of course it depends on their comp uh, and cultivation not applicable troll racials berserking this is great this is a great ability for tanks at 60 and pve but we're 19s here so not that big of a deal uh, increase your attack speed by 10% to, it should say, 30% at full health. The speed is increased by 10, and then it goes all the way down. Once you're at 30% health, it will give you 30% uh, in the, the, the obvious uh, scales between the two. Um, so this is nice, although not that important, um, because you don't really operate off of... It's hard to say. It's like you operate much more off of mechanical actions, if that makes sense, as opposed to, like, and that's kind of like why why I'm of the opinion that agility is bigger for a warrior than it than strength, because strength is a marginal benefit, um, whereas agility gives you mechanical benefit in terms of like crit and dodge. Um, whereas strength just allows you to block for more and to hit harder, like it doesn't, it doesn't change anything mechanically for you. And same thing with berserking, like it doesn't really, like it's nice. It's it's similar to strength in that, like oh, you'll do more damage, you know, but it, mechanically, it's not really gonna get you get you very far. It, it, it's not going to get you as far as like a war stomp or like a, a will the forsaken would basically is what I'm trying to say. A uh, regeneration, health regeneration rate increased by 10% uh, and 10% of total health regeneration may continue during combat. It is actually pretty nice for a warrior. Uh, again, because of the way spirit scales on a warrior, this is actually kind of nice. Um, that's actually, I would say, this is like the best place that that particular racial passive can be used is going to be on a warrior. Uh, beast slang, damage dealt versus beast. This is similar to command. 
again it's not really your role to be handling hunter pets so not not very big bow specialization not very big throwing specialization I actually like that because I'm a big proponent of throwing weapons at in PvP so uh, really I really do like that there although it's not that big uh, <clears throat> so if I were to rank these like I oh man I like these racials a lot more than I like the alliance racials that's for sure uh, man hardiness is big um, war stomp is big will the forsaken is big I think trolls are gonna have the weakest even though I really like regeneration um, and I really like that throwing specialization and berserking is nice even though it doesn't give you you know mechanically something better um, I'm gonna have to put troll racials in last place here even though like I still like them but like everything else from the other racials are just so good it's uh, we're definitely spolt here on Horde with these racials, that's for sure. So I'm just going to put Troll in last place. Just because you don't get anything mechanically, you just kind of get like buffs, you know what I mean? Like like the regeneration, I love it, and it's like best placed on a warrior. But it's really not that big of a deal in PvP. Um, let's see, who's going to take third place with these racial well let's let's look at who should get first place um hmm i love that that 25 percent sun resist is nice but there aren't nearly as many stuns um at 19 as there would be at 60 but there are enough for it to be like yeah that's gonna be good it's gonna be great against Hodge. it's gonna be great against conch shot and it's going to be great against uh, bombs and like other, you know, uh, like warrior charges. Um, I don't like Blood Fury. I think it's kind of a waste because as a warrior, you should never be one v oneing anyone at 19. Uh, you should just never be doing that. You should always be assisting. Um, and the axe specialization is like kind of nice, but not really that useful. Um, but man, hardiness is really good. Uh, hmm. Shadow resistance is nice, and that fear res immunity is really great. War stomp is really great, and the health is really great. Man, I just don't... <sighs> I think I'm going to have to go with undead with number one. Because of the will of forsaken, the immunity to fear and sleep, so no one's going to be able to put you to sleep with magic dust, and you're going to be able to get out of a warlock fear, which is the most detrimental of the crowd controls at 19. So I'm going to go with undead racial number one, and I think I'm going to have to go with Tarn racials for, for number two. That that health is just perfect for PvP, and the War Stomp just complements Warrior so well that, um, I mean, I can just see it. The Flag Carrier and his team are crossing mid, and you charge in, you bomb them, and then you follow it up with the War Stomp, and in that amount of time, you're able to, like, throw out the hamstrings. Yeah. I do like that. So I'm going to give Tarn second place, Orc third, and Troll last. Undead, Tarn, Orc, Troll. So we didn't go over the spirit here. Let's talk about um, Undead with the most at 25. Um, I forget, how did I rank the... I think I put Troll number one, and then I put... And then I must have put Orc second? No. It's kind of like a tie there. Uh, or did Undead? I think Undead got last, didn't it? Yeah. I don't know. But now, like, looking at that spirit and, like, the agility and, like, the thing with strength's not all that important at 19. Ooh, it's kind of hard to say. Um, they're all very comparable. But it's kind of odd that Troll has the best race, the best base stats, and then like the worst racials. Um, but I personally like I choose my race 
more based on their racials than I do their base stats simply because your stats end up getting smoothed out um, by enchants. So enchants and like the gear. Um, I think I think uh, oof, man. And then you've also got the hit boxes, right? Um, <laughs> Ooh, I think I'm going to go with Undead number one just because Will the Forsaken and their agility is great um, and their spirit is great and their stam is like right there, right in the middle. Um, and I don't really put that much importance on strength. So I think I'm going to give Undead the number one there. I think I'm going to give Tarin number two because of War Stomp, Endurance, and... Uh, and it's not that big of a difference. Like, like both Orc and Torn agility is abysmal. Um, but I just think the War Stomp and Endurance is going to outweigh Hardiness at 19. Although Hardiness is nice. Um, I, I, I Honestly, I th okay, here's what we'll do. We'll say Undead number one. We'll say Troll last. And we'll, we'll go ahead and put a tie between Torn and Orc. I take it back, we're going to give orc number two simply because of that hitbox with the female orc is much better than the hitboxes on the torrent. So we'll do that. We'll go undead number one overall, orc number two overall, torn third overall, and then troll last overall. Although like they're all very comparable, like we just went through everything and it's just kind of an odd mix-up. It's like, it's all kind of good um, on, on Horde. Kind of hard to really draw a line. Um, I don't really like having to rank these, but... Uh, but yeah, that would be my rank. Would be Undead, number one. Um, undead, female, number one. Orc, female, number two. Torin third. Troll, last. Um... Unless you're going just for like pure uh, DPS, like if you're going for pure, I just want to get in there. I want to, I want to get like a big two-hander, and I want to hit people. I would then I would go troll. But if you're gonna be playing it, um, you know, if you're gonna be playing for objective, that would be my rank: undead one, orc two, troll three, or torn three, troll last. Uh, for for objective wise, so. Now let's take a look at um, at our racials. So there's a few different. Let's just go ahead and get this opened up here. There's a few different ways in which to spec a warrior, and there's a lot of debate. A lot of people just initially go, "Oh, I've got to get five of five cruelty." Um, and I'm going to show you why that's not the case. Cruelty, of course, is, uh, you know, every point is a crit, um, which is great. And I really love crit, but there's more important things to be going after. Hold on, let me take a sip of this. There's more important things to be, like, you just can't tunnel vision. You're like, oh, crit, PvP, it's like, yeah, I know, but... There's more important things to be going here. Um, and that's why you see on those specs we've got four points into that. So I guess let's let's talk about let's talk about the this what I what I would call like the two hander spec. And you'll notice I don't put anything into improved heroic strike. <laughs> and I know you could be thinking like, oh, but you know, Hardington, you don't have Bloodthirst, you don't have Mortal Strike. Um, I don't even think you have Slam. So, like, your only, like, sort of ability to use would be Improved Heroic Strike. The reason why we don't, we don't ever really even cast, unless we're at, like, 80 plus Rage, we're not casting Heroic Strike ever. And, by the way, you really should never be at 80 plus rate. Like, you're just bad at rage management um, if you're at 80 plus. Like, it's not going to be the case because you don't have whirlwind and you don't have, like, sword specialization. So, you're never going to 
and you don't have highs, so you'll never be you know, behind the justice. So you're never gonna get like a whirlwind type effect that like just throws you up to a hundred rage at nineteen. Um, so you're never really gonna be using heroic strike uh, because you're gonna be dealing with proccing weapons. If you remember, you remember the weapons um, that we went over. They're all proc weapons. Glacial Stone is proc. Runic Dark Blade is proc. Night Reaver is proc. Shadow Fang is proc. The only one that's not is Assassin's Blade, and that's for um, flag carrying, right? So, and remember, this is like our two-hander spec. Um, this is not our flag carrying spec, but remember, all of our wep weapon enchants as well are all procs. So, except for, again, the flag-carrying one. So, it's not really. So, because of this, as a 19 warrior, you're playing off of procs. You're not playing off of Bloodthirst or or uh, or uh, Mortal Strike. You're playing off of proc damage, primarily. <laughs> it's another one of the reasons why I don't really believe in going heavy into strength and much more into agility because again agility is a proc like you're being able to crit so um, a lot of the damage is going to come from proc damage which is the way I played my uh, alliance warrior is I would never use heroic strike just because it's a waste of mana, man uh, sorry mana rage I would much rather hit a rend or hit a hamstring or hit a sunder armor which by the way one sunder is going to end up giving you more bonus damage for your your next swing than a heroic strike would add to your current swing so her you know like sunder is going to be better um, but to basically use these low rage costing abilities like a hamstring like just hit another hamstring just renew it like you know get like full time on that hamstring and force uh, like a proc on your weapon, force the firing enchant or force the life stealing enchant, and then force, you know, like try to get your weapon itself to proc. Um, and that's why none of my specs that that uh, we have here are ever go ever go into heroic strike because it's it's a waste of rage. It's never something you should be using unless again you're like you know 75 or 80 up to 100 rage which you should never be at that point because that would be it would if you ever were at that point in like a 19 war, uh, game it would just show you don't know how to manage your rage correctly you don't know how to dump rage correctly so that's basically I'm sorry I had to go on this rant about that because uh, someone argued like with me a lot on that and it's just like I understand where you're coming from and I'm sorry that's wrong um, never go into heroic strike and never even just take it off well don't take it off your bar because there is like rare cases where you can use it but you pretty much want to always be dumping rage into sunders uh, like hamstring sunder rend not not ever um, Heroic strike. Anyway, let's move on. So between these opening, either improved Ren or improve or like chance to parry, up to you which you want to go into. Um, Ren damage. It's not like it's it's nice. It's nice for that just consistent damage. Um, of course, you could go into parry. Uh, depends whether or not you want just a little bit more consistent damage or you want a little bit more mitigation um, I think parry is really strong uh, especially when you when you're two-hander um, but yeah up to you whichever one you prefer that little bit of rend or that little bit of, of mitigation completely up to you which one of these you want to go into but um, so you saw I went I went three here into rend and then two into deflection and then I picked up one <clears throat> into improve charge. 
So you'll see on on everything except for my flag carry set, um, which is really only like three primary sets, we always pick up that one improved charge. And the reason is because when you have one and two improved charge, that means when you charge, you will instantly have enough rage to throw down a hamstring. And hamstring's like your number one priority. It's your, it's like your job as a warrior to hamstring, hamstring, hamstring. Um, and if you don't have that one and two improved charge, your charge only gets you nine rage. So think about that. You're going in, um, say you're chasing someone or something. Like you're trying to put a hamstring on someone. You charge them. You get nine rage from your charge. Hamstring costs ten. And they dodge your next attack. Or you miss on your swing. Or they parry it. Or they block it. Or something like that. And you don't get any rage. And then say it's like a hunter. They wing clip you and they just run away. And they're and you just stuck there looking, you know, with your thumb in your mouth. Which is why it's so important that you that you get this one in to improve charge so that when you charge, it doesn't matter what your next swing is, whether it hits or doesn't, you're going to have rage to throw that hamstring down. So, this is kind of my, what I would go into if I was going like pure DPS, pure, um, like, like two-handed spec, basically. We have four and two cruelty, three and two improve and two deflection, and one improved charge. Now, let's take a look at the, oh, that's not the one. Let's take a look at what I would go for my like primary spec if I was playing, um, I don't know what I would call it, but basically like the utility warrior. If I was to play utility warrior, actually, honestly, you know what? You know, you could go either of those, but I think perhaps five, five and two parry would be better. Um, would be better there. Excuse me. I'm getting, uh... <clears throat> so, <clears throat> man, excuse me. Um, up to you whether you want to get that improved render or not. Um, but the the biggest thing here again we got that one and two improved charge for that guaranteed rage on a hamstring um, and then why are we going into four or five tactical mastery what's going on here well you need it you need this 20 because disarm quite certain disarm cost 20 um, whenever I made this I, I made sure that it made sense um, well and if I believe that, then I will believe that disarm costs 20 rage. Double check for yourself. Um, I, I'm going to put money that this that that would be the case, because this is what it would be for. It's either that or shield bash. I think it's shield bash. Either shield bash or disarm. Either way, you want what what this gives you is the ability to swap stances to go from battle stance to defensive stance and shield bash a spell or to swap and to disarm a rogue um, is what this gives you because uh, yeah it's got to be for shield bash because that's the one with timing importance uh, so shield bash costs 20 20 rage um, because you got to think if you don't have this and you swap to defensive stance to interrupt a spell that's being cast, which is one of your primary responsibilities as a warrior, and then you have to generate another five rage somewhere. Like, because if you only go, say, say you go only, unlock this, say you go only three, like that's not going to be, like anything less than 20 is just not going to cut it. If you go, what is going on? If you go zero, when you switch to defensive, 
it removes all rage you start at zero rage and now you've got to build up 20 rage in order to interrupt this spell not really going to happen um, when like in the amount of time it needs to happen right um, if you go three into here 15 it's not going to be enough you're going to switch to defensive you're going to be set to 15 rage if you have more than 15 or reduce you down to 15 and then you've you've got to come up with five rage somehow to interrupt the spell and at that point it could be too late which is why we go 20 into it um, so that you're able to instantly go to defensive throw on the shield shield bash um, so yeah I mean I, I, I think that should be quite obvious quite simple uh, as to why that the four there is important for being able to get that shield bash off on time um, and of course the one rage we've already gone over that um, now the, the, you can go into improved rend or improved deflection it's up to you I think the deflection might make a little bit more sense than rend uh, but up to you um, the rend would just be for extra DPS and this would be for just a little bit more you know uh, anti rogue anti hunter business and then for our final spec, and by the way, this is the spec that I would recommend most people go if you want to play um, tactically. This is what I would like that that charge and the, that tactical mastery. If you want to play tactically, this is this is what you would go. And then our last spec. Which I called the orc tax master. <laughs> so yeah, this this goes in with orc. Uh, it it feeds into get out of here. It feeds into the orc. Um, the orc racial hardiness. <laughs> this gives you an additional twelve percent. So anticipation defense by ten. This is gonna be nice, especially if people don't pick up hit on you know whatever it is um, on the classes that are able to pick up hit it's going to reduce the their hit chance against you um, it's also going to give you a little bit of parry it's going to give you a little bit of dodge uh, it's going to give you a little bit of block so all around it's kind of nice I think no it doesn't yeah um, and then we get the iron will and this just goes along with uh, goes along with um, the orc racial. Um, it's also nice on other classes or on other races who don't have the orc racial, the ability to pick up some stun resist uh, by 12% there. And then improve, improve blood rage. This is because you don't have, you're not going to be able to pick up improved charge. Um, so you still want some ability to like get an instant hamstring out and that's what that improved blood rage will give you um now there's another there are other variants of just like the zero zero ten uh spec now i would not go shield specialization at 19 even if you're flag carrying that's not really I think I think toughness would be would be better there let's play around with this and see what we can get I mean you could go into just full-on toughness um, by 10% like it's nice um, especially like if you're going dwarf this toughness on top of you know your stone skin like you're going to be reducing damage by quite a bit it would be really nice but I think uh, at least picking up one one little bit into iron will might be might be better than two percent armor uh, but it's kind of hard to say cuz like every time you look at this like it's just two percent armor for an additional three percent to stun resistance kinda hard whenever that whenever that's offered to you like you do you want 2% armor or do you want 3% stun resist? Uh, hmm. 
up to you on what you want to do, but I would personally go into that stun resist. I think that's mechanically going to be the better scenario. Like, the armor is nice, but it's not... Um, like, your playstyle is going to have a lot more to do with your survivability than than armor value on toughness. And a stun is one of those situations where if they can stun you, they can all get on, like, say you're flag carrying, and they get a stun on you, that's the time they're going to commit to trying to kill you. And if you can re resist that stun and delay their their commitment to to like going all in on you then you know i think that's going to be a lot bigger than than armor value and then that one to blood rage for the ability to uh get that instant hamstring off since you do not have improved charge so yeah <clears throat> kind of like a flag carry spec but yeah guys that uh that's pretty much it for for warrior Got those three main specs there. We'll just give you a quick view of the three main specs to go. It is like two-handed DPS. Um, sort of like flag carry build. And then overall tactical build there. So yeah, guys. I uh, hope this was informative. And I will see y'all in the next video.